Welcome to a miracle day. You say, how do you know? Well, I'm speaking that for faith for you and for me. Why can't we believe for a miracle day? God can do miraculous things. I have a testimony to share with you. And this really encouraged my heart. This woman called in and told us that her mother had come to salvation. And, you know, she had not been open to God at all. Older woman, closed, and she received the Lord. I so appreciate those testimonies. Sometimes we have prayed and prayed and prayed for our loved ones, and we think, if you want to go to hell so much, help yourself. But we don't give up, do we? We just hang in and we believe God that he will move in the miraculous. And I am very excited about what you're going to see today because it helps you to put the miraculous in practice in your daily life. Don't you like that? Why just, well, way down the road, I'll have a miracle. Why couldn't you have daily miracles? I believe you could. That's good. And Mom, I know people are watching that need miracles in their life for like finances and some health issues. And so I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website. We know God answers prayer. We've seen the testimony from this lady here and as well many other testimonies that we receive very consistently, frequently about God answering prayer and God doing the miraculous. And as you watch this teaching today, this interview today, I know you're going to be powerfully impacted. Oh my goodness, this is maybe one of my favorite guests. I love this guest because um, this guy spoke faith into my heart. His name is Jason Noble. Like who's Jason Noble? Well, that's exactly the point. You need to watch this because your faith will be encouraged. Your uh, vision will be clarified to keep it on Jesus. You'll have hope and a future for miracles in your life. You'll resolve and talk through some of the things. What happens when God doesn't show up? Mama, what do you see saw me suffer? where I wandered states of night. My friends, the adults, did things they don't want me to see. When you can see my ribs only when my hair was falling out. I can do everything it takes. Thank you so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are thrilled to have you with us. And I was praying about our time together, and God dropped a verse in my heart to encourage you. And it's Psalms 100 verse 5. And it says, For the Lord is good, His loving kindness is everlasting, and His faithfulness to all generations. I just want to encourage you today. You might be watching and you're concerned about generations. You're concerned about your kids or your grandkids not knowing Jesus, not serving Jesus. And we want to pray for you. Pray for your kids, your grandkids, because God's faithfulness is continuous to all generations, not just us, but to the generations that follow us. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you. And we know that God can absolutely bring a breakthrough with your kids, grandkids, and your family. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We like to pray for you. And mom, we have a really cool guest oh, today. Oh, I guess so. And we have Jason Noble with us. So this is a very important time. You wrote this book, Breakthrough to Your Miracles, which I really like. Thank you because so much. It, deals with all the sides of it. Yes. So sometimes we get disturbed when we don't get it or the timing of it. Or right. we think, did God forget how to spell my name? Right. <laughs> this book helps you to keep your eyes on God. Amen. So we're very delighted to have you. Glad to be here. As our honor. guest. But I'm delighted with your book. Thank you. I think your book is where we live. Amen. Well, in that when we wrote it, we, were, we wanted to write a very practical manual like okay if you get the call and your life goes upside down what do you do those reminders you know I, I read in scripture where it says we're supposed to encourage our hearts and as we wrote this my prayer was lord help us to really put some encouraging words like how do you position yourself 
for a miracle. And that was really, uh, really my goal in writing That's it. the big thing in the book. That I is. agree. Yep. Get yourself in position. Get yourself in position. Now, you know, I look at it liken it to playing like thir like right field in a baseball game. You can't dictate that the ball is going to come to you, but if it does come to you, you got to be ready for it and get ready to catch it. And that's what my goal in this book was to say, how do you put yourself in that position to receive a miracle? Every scripture I've read, every story in the Bible I've read of healing, there's always a human component. There's always somebody that God uses to work through that's positioned for that miracle. And as we were walking through the story with John and walking through that family, uh, the, with the family, the Lord really spoke to me and he said, listen, don't worry about the outcome, just get positioned, get ready for it. And so we started to really dig into that and go, okay, what does it mean to be positioned for a miracle? And that's what we really deal with, like things like speaking life. You know, the, the Bible tells us the power of life and death is in the tongue. And so speaking life and, and people wonder, well, what does speaking life mean? I really think it means not just speaking what you hope or what you, but it's taking scripture, knowing God's word and speaking it out over your situation. And so like those very practical things, like what do we do when we get into these situations? Because you never know what kind of call we're going to get tomorrow. Life can be no. turned upside down. No, we don't. You know, and it's not only in healing, but it's for children that are lost. It's for marriages that are broken. It's for, you know, uh, for relationships that are, that are damaged. It's for, you know, your finances. I mean, all of these things play into God breaking through. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage all of our viewers, hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy of Breakthrough to Your Miracle. Yeah. Um, this is a real life story. I love this book because you document in here the story of a, of a kid, a teenager who was raised from the dead. Yep. Like seriously, oh. in America. And we're always like, yeah, it's always in Africa. It happens over there. This is in America, medical documentation. And this is a story not only of, of his life, literally resurrection, but also... Jason, I love what you do in this. You integrate and weave throughout that whole story, um, faith, yeah. Bible, principles, application. So hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a boatload of copies because they will be a massive, massive blessing to you. Amen. And when you, when, you, when you got that phone call from Joyce, yes. hey, my son's in the hospital. Yep. What was what was like what was the 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 status at that point? Well, at that point, so um, we had heard that he went under. He had been under for 15 minutes at that point. Uh, he fell through an icy lake in St. Louis um, and fell. He was under for 15 minutes. They pulled him out, um, worked on him for another 45 minutes. So an hour and eight minutes total when it was all said and done. And the doctors just could not revive him. I mean, no pulse, no oxygen. Nobody survives that. I mean, it, like being underwater for 15 minutes. And in St. Louis. Um, you know, we don't get lakes that freeze over. We get a little bit of cold snap, or we did get a little bit of cold snap, where there'd be just enough ice that you could walk out on, but it had been like 20 degrees, and, and the temperature went up to 75 the, the two days before. And so he, they walked down in the ice, he fell in, um, and it's just, it's one miracle after another. You know, I know I'm kind of going around answering your question, but sure. it's so cool to see how God had just set that up, because in that lake, that lake is 50 feet deep everywhere, with a muddy bottom and they would have never been able to find him. Wow. He went down in an area that was 10 feet deep, the only area in the lake with a rock bottom. And so, I mean, God just had set this up, you know? And so hour and eight minutes, Joyce walks in and she comes up to her, the, the foot of her, her son's bed and he was gray and dead. And she goes at that split second. And so many times we have a split second decision on how we're going to respond. She prayed, Holy Spirit, bring my son back to life. And at that moment, I mean, it wasn't an hour later, it wasn't two hours, it was literally at that moment his pulse came back. Mm -hmm. From there, he was brain dead. The doctor said about a 1% chance that he would make it overnight. He was still a vegetable. You know, sometimes we look at God and we go, okay, God, you did a miracle, but it's not all the, all the way done yet. Mm -hmm. And we held on to the fact that, you know what, if God did this, he's going to take it all the way through. We're mm -hmm. going to believe God to show up. And so that's when I got the call, like, they need you down at the hospital. And when I walked in, it was literally the moment that Joyce had walked out with that message that, Yes, he's alive, but 99% chance that he's going to die overnight. The 1% chance that he'll live. They were getting ready to do organ transplant. I mean, like, it was just, uh, you know, he, they said if he does live, he'll be a vegetable for the rest of his life. So we took a group of pastors in the room, and we just started praying. I mean, we just, we prayed two things. Lord, restore his lungs. 
Like breathe into him the breath that you breathe into Adam. Restore his lungs. And as I prayed that prayer, I saw, turned around, and I saw two angels in the room that were floor to ceiling. Mm, wow. I mean, God yeah. just showed up. Mm. And I'd seen those in, in a room four years earlier in Port Angeles, Washington, where I prayed for an 85-year-old lady who she was 15 minutes from death and uh, got a call from her daughter saying, Pastor, will you get down here? We need you to pray. And so walked into her room, bent down to her ear and said, ma'am, you're on the edge of eternity. Like, need you to, like, this is your time to accept Jesus into your life. Mm. If you want to do that, squeeze my hand. And she squeezed my hand. And at that moment, I turned around and saw those same two angels in the room. Wow. I mean, floor to ceiling, shield, you know. And so within 15 minutes, the color came back into her body. She woke up an hour later and said, I've given my life to the Lord and walked out of the hospital the next day. So I knew God was doing something with John. I turned back to John's bed. He overbreathed his respirator, eyes open. This boy that was supposed to be brain dead and in a coma. I looked in his eyes uh, and, and the nurses, of course, said, oh, he just overbreathed his respirator. And this happens all the time. And, you know, doctors love to just downplay, you know, and what I walked away with that is I go, you have to go by what you know, not by what you see especially in times like this. And so um, we continue to pray. We prayed, Lord, restore his brain. You're the creator. If you created heavens and the earth, you still create today. Like that's in your DNA. So Lord, recreate his mind. And over his head, I saw a million colors. And it was like the Lord just was knitting his brain back together again. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, right after that, he opened his eyes and shoulders came off the mat. And I knew that he was gonna, he was gonna make it. I walked out to Joyce and told her, he will walk out of the hospital. Wow. Next morning though, back to it, he was still in a coma. And so at that point, we had to hold on. And, you know, that's where we came on the scene through a series of awesome miracles. He walked out of the hospital 16 days later, completely healed. But it's too, I'm going to interject. Yeah. I know you want to do this. I do. But huh? there's some ebb and flow with what you're saying. 100%. And so what happens a lot of times is we just think it's going to be all straight. 100%. And it's not, but it's a little bit of a roller coaster a ride. A lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of a roller coaster ride. And you have mm -hmm. to hold on. Exactly. You have to hold Put on. Put your seatbelt on and yep. be ready. Be yep. focused and stay the course. And don't let things shake you. Mm -hmm. Because you'll get reports yep. during the time. Sometimes even things go from bad to worse. Yep. And it's like, you know, I think the enemy does that to try to get our focus mm -hmm. off what's really important because he knows what the end game is going to be, exactly. you know, so. I think that's wonderful. And this will help you stay focused. Amen. Because when you see all of these things, you feel all of these things, you hear all these things, how do you stay focused? I want you to get the book. Now, believe me, I know how to get a breakthrough to your miracle. So I'm not just talking from, oh, well, I read the book. I know from experience Amen. this works, but do you know? And can you receive this? So call us today. Of course, we're happy to pray with you, but I wouldn't get just one book. You know people who need breakthroughs, don't you? And a lot of times they won't listen to you. Yeah. You can talk your faith, you can talk your experiences, and they don't listen. But get the book. Pass it on. It's a missionary. It'll work while you sleep. Amen. That's now, great. we're going to be back, so just stay right there because you need your faith encouraged. I always need encouragement in my faith. I need to know how to speak things that will really bring faith into my daily life. Stay there. We'll be right back. Have you ever found yourself in a desperate situation? Are the answers to prayer you receive disappointing? Why haven't you experienced the miracle you long for? We want to help you position yourself to receive your miracle. For your gift of $39 or more, we will send you The Breakthrough to Your Miracle by Jason Noble. After witnessing a young man declared dead after his body was pulled from icy waters, walk out of the hospital 16 days later, Jason has spoken life and healing to many, sharing life-giving principles that bring life-changing results. Along with this impactful book, we will send you Marilyn's mini book, The Miracle Process, where she shares scriptural truth and biblical principles of how you can believe God for the miracles you need. Also included in this great offer is Marilyn's three CD teaching, Everyday Miracles, Experiencing Life on Earth as it is in Heaven, and our Miracle Scripture Card. When you begin to experience heaven on earth, you'll experience a quality of life like you've never imagined. Call or click today to receive this anointed resource. Mama, what is this on my suffer? When I wandered states of night. My friends, the adults, did bring to the woman made to see. What happened to 
when you can see my ribs long as my hair is falling out. You can do everything it takes. Do you need a miracle? You know, if you're really honest, you're going to say, yes, in certain areas of my life, I need miracles. Or you might say, in every area of my life, I need a miracle. This is a program that could transform your life. If you will listen very closely and be open to faith, you could have a miracle. Easy. And not only just in this temporary time, but you put yourself in a position to receive miracles. Amen. And I love that in your book. We have Jason Noble with us with his book, but he really tells you how to put yourself in a position yes. to receive miracles. So a lot of times we want a miracle, but what's our position of faith? So yeah. share with us. We're yeah, and what's our role? Like, what do we, you know, I mean, that was the question. And as we, we walked through the story with John and Joyce, you know, there was no manual on how to walk through something like that. You know what I mean? And so we just started praying, Lord, give us your, give us your um, strategy. Let us know what you want us to do. Literally from moment to moment, we would say, Lord, show us what to do next. And that's where a lot of this came out of is, Lord, show us what to do when we're in the need of a breakthrough. When we need, and I've ran into so many people across the world and country who need breakthrough. Yeah. I mean, it is a, Almost 100% of people have some area in their life that they need breakthrough, whether it's a physical miracle or healing or, you know, financial or, you know, and I think you take that and go, okay, God, I'm going to play my part. And then that allows you to play your role. And I'm going to interject here. If yeah. you're watching and you need breakthrough in your life, hop on the phone, get on yes. the website. We want to pray for you. He just yeah. listed a whole bunch of things, marriage, finances, health, family issues. I want to encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that yeah. God would give you the breakthrough. And you walk through that with Joyce yes. and her son, John. Yes. And we talked just we talked about that undulating kind of the troughs right. and the peaks, Yes. tips and troughs. Yes. So what do you do in the troughs? from the bottom when you're in the they're like discouragement you have to hold on you can't give up and I think at those moments you go okay God what do you want me to see in this not just what I see but what's what's your perspective there was a day about halfway through about the seventh day where nothing seemed to be happening I mean honestly it was one of those troughs and we're just going God like okay we prayed we believed we feel like you've said that he was going to walk out of here but nothing's happening he's still asleep he's still you know he's still in a coma Lord, like, talk to us. Like, tell us what you, what, what's your perspective on this? And one of the things God said is he said, look back and see what I've already done. Look back and see all of the miracles. So many times we want to see that big miracle right away. And I think God works differently. He does one miracle at a time, one thing at a time. And they might appear to be small, but what God showed us is it becomes this tapestry incredible tapestry of miracles that he puts together for this incredible miracle that he walks out of, that John walked out of. I mean, John walked out of the yeah. hospital. And I think at those moments, you look back on those, all of what God had already done and that heart of gratitude changes your perspective. You know, you look back and go, okay, God, you are working. Because what the enemy would love to do is point a finger at God and say, God, you're not good. You're not working. You don't hear me in this situation. You know, and God's saying, wait, I do hear you. I do see you. I know where you're at. Trust in my timing. Trust in the process. Trust in what I'm walking you through because he is walking us through things. Trust in what, what my goal is. You know, sometimes we go back to that scripture that says all things work together for good and we miss it because what that scripture doesn't say, it does not say all things are good. There are some bad things that we have to walk through that God takes and puts together. And so in those troughs, it's so important we remember God's, God's promises. It's so important that we say, God, help me to see. I don't want to see in my eyes, but I want to see your perspective. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, come and show me your perspective on it. Mm -hmm. Recounting the faithfulness of God. Right. Exactly. That gratitude and what he's already done in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know? You say, I need this. Yes, you do. I think we all do. We I do. wake up in the morning. You know, I believe this is a miracle day. And my mind may say, are you kidding? You know, you've got jet lag, you're this or that, you're too old, blah, 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 blah. And so when you feed your faith on breakthrough to your miracle, I'm always feeding my faith. Amen. I need faith every day. And so do you. 
I want you to call in and just name one miracle. We're not going to go into a lot of detail that you're believing for and get the book or get several books. You have friends Amen. who perhaps are very discouraged with their life. Give them something good. You give them fruit, passes away. Candy makes them fat. <laughs> give them God's word. <clears throat> transformation. Yeah. That's good. And additionally, I mean, there's a miracle for John. He's raised right. from the dead. Right. But I want to ask, you're the pastor at that time. What do you see as God's plan for you yeah. in that miracle story? Because sometimes we're the bystanders. We're not like in the thick of it, but we're the right. rope holders. We're alongside, you know, yeah. we're kind of. So what do you see for yourself in that? And I think that's important for our audience because not all of us are in the thick of that right. crisis. You know, for me, um, I think what God was saying is I want to show you how I work. And then I want you to take that and share it with the world because so many people need breakthrough. So many people need what we're talking about um, because, man, you know, we were we were in the thick of it and we were in this moment of saying, OK, God, like, I mean, this is the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life where you've got a dead boy in front of you, you oh. know, and God raises him from, oh. the, from the dead. You know, and so this whole process and really unpacking it. So many times I think we think that the Christian life is a perfect package wrapped up as a nice gift with a bow on top. And it's not always that way. There's difficult times that come into life. There's challenges. There's, I mean, all of the things. And, and I want people to look at that and go, okay, I'm normal. Like, this is what a Christian life looks like. There are ebbs and flows. There are peaks and valleys, you know. True. And we live in Medford, Oregon now. And one of the things you learn about peaks and valleys, right, Pe mountaintops and, and, and valleys, nothing grows on the mountaintop. All it is is rocks. You have a good you have a good view, but in the valley, that's where the fruit grows. Right. <laughs> and so, in those so valley good. moments where we yeah. think, "Okay, God, we're in the valley. Like, what are you doing?" That's where fruit is grown. That's where it's stressful. That's where we have to say, "Okay, God, I trust you, no matter if I'm on the you know the peak or the valley." Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. And to that end, you know, um, a lot of things we go through are bad circumstances, right. bad situations. And it's smelly. We don't like it. Yes. But it's, I call it fertilizer. Right. Oh, yeah. Yes. There, there, there is fertilizer. <laughs> you know? And in those moments of difficulty, we can't lose our focus. Right. We can't lose the fact that God's word works for me mm -hmm. in the peaks and it works in the, in the valleys. It works in the moments where everything is great. So many times, I think, too, when things are going great, we don't take time to build our foundation. You can't build a foundation in this middle of a storm. And so for Joyce, she had been studying six months beforehand, believing God, really digging in and finding mm -hmm. out, okay, God, what, what do you say for my life? So many of us, we wait until the middle of a storm to try to build our foundation. And so you might say, hey, my life's going great. I don't need, really have an area that I need breakthrough. Great. Then use this time to start building and really digging into what God's saying. This is what I love. Feed your faith and not your doubts. Exactly. <laughs> because when you're in the middle of it, you know, you've got a lot of doubts. So which side are you going to feed? The doubt side or the faith side? Right. So these are choices, but the book will help you make the right faith choices. Amen. Say the right things. Say what God says. I love this. Breakthrough to your miracle. Because, folks, I believe miracles are our daily bread. Amen. And you say, well, I don't believe it. Well, too late to tell me that, and I'm older than you. <laughs> so get the book. Get two or three books, pass them on. It's really, really good. Don't you agree? Yeah. And what would you say in terms of like a summary? Like, is there a summarizing verse that you would say from this whole experience that kind of would like cap encapsulate everything? Yeah, Matthew nineteen twenty six. All things are possible with God. And that's a little bit of a that's a little bit of a um, of my own translation. But that's what I walk out of saying. You know, that scripture says, "With man, you know, it may not seem impossible, or it may seem impossible, but with God, all things are possible." And, you know, and I think that's so encouraging because how many times in our lives are we in these moments where it feels like it's never going to end or it feels like right. God's not going to show up and God always shows up. May not give us the outcome we want, but God always shows up. You know, I've talked to people, there's a whole book and there's a whole chapter in the book that says what happens when God doesn't give you what you want. You know, how do you work through that when you prayed and prayed and prayed and a person still dies? Does that mean God didn't do miracles? Does that mean God didn't? No, that's not it at all. It's a different outcome and a different plan. Mm -hmm. And that's tricky to manage because we have it to is. coach our, and, and I think we have to walk with Holy Spirit and say, look, lead me into truth. Yes. Help me to stay away from deception, the accuser, 
right. you know, accusation, because that's a tricky journey. So I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. We know you have needs in your life. Some of you are watching, you've been disappointed, discouraged, you're frustrated with God because you're like, hey, it's not working. And you've maybe been angry. We want to pray for you. We want to ask God to participate in your life and open the eyes of your understanding so you can see what God is doing. may not match up with exactly what you've requested, but you can definitely take it to the bank that God is working and moving and active and alive. And for some of you watching as well, you need resurrection in your Amen. life. Romans Amen. 8, 11. The Holy Spirit breathes resurrection into your life. Hop on the phone, grab your copy today. It'll be a tremendous blessing to you. Have you ever found yourself in a desperate situation? Are the answers to prayer you receive disappointing? Why haven't you experienced the miracle you long for? We want to help you position yourself to receive your miracle. For your gift of $39 or more, we will send you The Breakthrough to Your Miracle by Jason Noble. After witnessing a young man declared dead after his body was pulled from icy waters, walk out of the hospital 16 days later, Jason has spoken life and healing to many, sharing life-giving principles that bring life-changing results. Along with this impactful book, we will send you Marilyn's mini book, The Miracle Process, where she shares scriptural truth and biblical principles of how you can believe God for the miracles you need. Also included in this great offer is Marilyn's three CD teaching, Everyday Miracles, Experiencing Life on Earth as it is in Heaven, and our Miracle Scripture Card. When you begin to experience Heaven on Earth, you'll experience a quality of life like you've never imagined. Call or click today to receive this anointed resource. We're so very thrilled to have Jason Noble on our program today. Jason, would you pray for our audience? Because they need a breakthrough. We do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want to say, if God can do it for John, he can do it for you. And so today, let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that you are the God of the breakthrough. Lord, that you're the God of the miraculous. Lord, and as my friends are watching today on this broadcast, Lord, I thank you, God, that you know where they're at. You love them. And God, as they position themselves for a miracle, I believe that no matter how big the mountain is that they're facing, God, that you're going to help them through it. And Lord, help them. I pray you'd encourage people that have lost their hope. God, just restore that hope. Just restore their heart, God. I pray that they'd continue to trust in you. Lord, we pray off all fear and anxiety today. Lord, as they're looking at these situations in their life and they're so afraid, God, I just pray that you would bless them, that you do incredible miracles, heal marriages, finances, jobs, and what they're walking through. In Jesus' name, amen. I think this is so wonderful. Don't you? Don't you feel God's presence? Don't you feel like he's warming your heart mm -hmm. and encouraging you? And again, breakthrough to your miracle. I need breakthroughs all the time. And you do too. So everyone watching this program, you need the book. And this is Jason Noble, who really has experienced the miraculous. So he's not just saying, it's something I haven't experienced. I know it's in the Bible, but he can say it's in the Bible and mm -hmm. I have experienced what's in the Bible. Amen. So this is important, of course, that you get the book. And I want to say this to you. Don't give up. Some of you watching, you say, oh, well, what's the use? Don't do that. The game is not over till you win. Thanks be unto God who always, always leads us to triumph in Christ.